welcome to this video of Blooms for You. Thank you so much for clicking on it. It is a special treat kind of video because I have a few orchid ninjas to shout out. But not only that, we are going to be seeing blooms in this episode that have long faded and gone. But while they were in bloom, I did manage to at least dedicate them. Unfortunately, some candidates were not filmed and dedicated because life got in the way. That was a big, big bummer. I didn't get to them in time. However, what we've got in store is still remarkable and thank goodness to the technology, we can appreciate blooms even after they have faded. So, in episodes like these, I say thank you to you personally for your support on my channel based on the list that I have where I can gather names that are new from the comments as well as subscribers that I can identify. If you've been subscribed to my channel and have not been mentioned, let me tell you, the time frame of my list is now February, March 2022, so I am getting there. If you've not been mentioned and you've been subscribed long before that, please let me know in the comments if you would like to make me aware that you are subscribed, have not commented, I can't see private accounts. Stay private if you choose to do so, but know that Dendrobium Hibiki blooms for everybody as a massive thank you to all of you for supporting my channel and everybody that is not mentioned here today. It is important for me on my channel that you know that I see you, I appreciate you, and that you spend time watching my videos, leaving comments, leaving helpful information for others to read. All of that is very very much appreciated and the only way I know how I can give back and at least acknowledge your support and thank you for it is by allocating buds and blooms and spikes as my orchids come into bloom. I have always enjoyed an orchid coming into bloom prior to having my channel but let me tell you something it adds an extra special little je ne sais quoi kick of excitement and enthusiasm when an orchid comes into bloom now because I know there's a name attached to the bloom or the spike. For me, that makes these episodes so much fun to document and that is why I'm pretty upset about the blooms that I could not document because time was just not on my side, including some terrible weather conditions which manifested themselves as warm, dry wind. Not just wind in the form of beautiful airflow for the orchids, no, gale force winds which were just insane. They were relentless and yeah, short time span blooming orchids <laughs> bloomed even shorter than that. Anyway, not all the blooms were from yesteryear but there's one in bloom right now. So let's go have a look which one it is and which names came up. I really, really hope that this late afternoon sun on my Phalaenopsis cornosurvi variety Chatella day is not off-putting, even though it is blowing out some of the petals because, well, that is just the structure and the characteristic of the bloom because it is that waxy and that glossy. I just love how this light is enhancing the different features of the blooms and we have several angles to work with. But these blooms are dedicated to orchid ninjas. And I couldn't think of a better orchid honestly to say thank you to these three orchid ninjas for their support on my channel because one of them is Novelty Fowl. Now that all makes sense, right? Another one is Sharon Carpenter. And there is Chris Schmitz. Thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. Thank you so much for becoming Orchid Ninjas. My Phalaenopsis Cornoserbi Variety Chatella Day. Lovingly called Lady Chatterley in my collection. She blooms for you with some beautiful, beautiful blooms. And two more buds are swelling up nicely. And uh, yeah, I did lose three buds even before these managed to bloom out. So what you're seeing here is just natural. She's absorbing a lower leaf. She is one of the oldest orchids in my collection. I am absolutely not concerned by that one bit. Another thing that she's currently doing, of which I am super happy, is she's forming another spike right here. Brand new spike coming through. I, at least I hope it's visible. There we go. So she is going to have three spikes very, very soon. We may even be on time to see the first bloom on that new spike. And another thing, this orchid is super busy. <laughs> Look at what she's doing in the back here, right at the far end over there. But look at how this one is doing a U-turn, hopefully to go into the media. That is very encouraging. 
and also it's branching. Oh, it's going to be difficult for me to focus because this orchid is super, super heavy. She doesn't look like it, but she really, really is. So yeah, she's very busy, but oh, isn't that exactly what we want, especially from our novelty fowls? The fragrance of these blooms do resemble what we see. They have a plastic fragrance to them. That could also be because the brain plays tricks on us. And well, if a bloom looks like plastic, waxy, the brain may think, and assimilate that with a similar smell but on the other hand there's also a sweet fruity smell to her so it's a pleasant fragrance if you can look past that new plastic smell that you get and yes you can hear maybe Siliano in the background it's his time outside right now but with this light I wanted to take advantage and show the Cornu Serbi variety Chatala Day in a different light late afternoon early evening sunshine and I hope that I was successful that you enjoyed seeing the blooms because it's really important for me that Orchid Ninja, Novelty Fell Sun, Orchid Ninja, Sharon Carpenter Sun, and Orchid Ninja, Chris Schmidt's Sun, that you like what you see because your support on my channel being Orchid Ninjas brings a massive smile to my face as does this orchid. Look at her. She also has a smile on her face. Thank you to the three of you Orchid Ninjas. I appreciate your support. I hope that you're enjoying what you're seeing on the other side of YouTube. Ooh wee, ooh wee, ooh wee. <laughs> I cannot express to you how beautiful this orchid smells. What I can do is give it a good try, but first of all, my four Stanhopia blooms are dedicated to Lucia Gohod, Robert Mangum, Anne Fredrickson, and Ernest Luthringer. Thank you to all of you for your support on my channel. You are so very much appreciated. Now you're only seeing two blooms because Stan the man here, is being a little bit awkward but awkward only for filming not for enjoying the blooms and yes i should have had five blooms but you know <clears throat> they do what they want and we have to do our best to just enjoy what they give us right okay here are the other two blooms right at the top this is the best view ever and all the stills that i've taken i need a separate hard drive just for those <laughs> <laughs> they will just go across the screen because oh my goodness this orchid is just made for photography and she does so well on the camera I don't have to do much explaining except gushing <laughs> and speaking of gushing I will now go into the detail of this fragrance cinnamon <laughs> but not just cinnamon I can really taste the big red chewing gum in my mouth it's like this orchid's fragrance is so intense it actually gets absorbed in your pores and you smell it way into the evening as well if you want to get away from this fragrance I don't see why you would want to but if you did want to get away from it because it might be too intense for you you can't <laughs> let me just put that out there you can't if you're far away you smell it if you're close up you smell it if you go inside to the other end of the house you smell it and in the evening it feels like the concrete around this orchid has also absorbed the fragrance and then continues to release the fragrance for the duration of the night but let me tell you one thing if you don't like heavy fragrances know that these blooms will not be around for long if you don't like it that intense it'll only take three to four days honestly that is all we're gonna get out of these blooms and I am hustling to get all the documentation and filming done that I need to so that we can appreciate them at a later date because by the time this clip airs this orchid will be long long out of bloom already and yes she's already growing new growths which is awesome one thing I do like doing in the summer and that is watering especially if I have plenty of water to go around <laughs> and this one wants water and I'm like you and me we make a great team unfortunately someone insisted to be stubborn my fifth bud never had the chance to open but it didn't stop it from being fragrant as well but it is not worthy a dedication these blooms are amazing not just to look at not just to smell but also to touch look at this look at this right here that's why I love this shot look at that it's like the movie Predator and I'm aware that there is a Stanhopia out there that is named Predator and this is why 
it, they feel like plastic, but they have like a squid kind of plastic feel to them. There's a teeny tiny bit of give, and then also that teeny tiny bit of, I would say, sliminess, but not a wet sliminess. It's just insanity. <laughs> I am so glad at least I have one Stanhope here to be able to experience everything this orchid is throwing at me when it blooms, because when it's out of bloom, it's just go, 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 water fertilizer, water fertilizer, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. <laughs> but we can stop for three days and just gawk. So, I hope that was enough gawking, or maybe it was too much gawking. I'm sorry if this was a little long-winded. Any excuse for me to be yapping away about this orchid, I'll take it. But I don't need any excuses at all to say thank you to Lucia Gohod, Robert Mangum, and Fredrickson and Ernest Lutheringer for your support on my channel. Know that my Stanhopia acidensis in all its incredible glory, she blooms for you. We have ourselves three very, very charming and beautiful blooms from the Phalaenopsis KTC Kaokicha Kut, which I would like to dedicate to Nedun Cheralathan Sirumavalan, Mark W., and Nick Moore. It is a very late, late filming session today. I thought I would see how this orchid responds to early evening light and I'm liking what I'm seeing because if I had any harsh contrast with a lot of light from the facade or sunlight, the details wouldn't be as prominent. And yes, I mentioned three names and I'm only showing two blooms, but you know, as Phalaenopsis would have it, <laughs> we have another spike with a single bloom in the back here. Unfortunately, not all together to present themselves so beautifully. One thing I'm missing out on this time of day, though, is that she is not fragrant anymore. And normally she is very fragrant during the day. And she has a sort of sweet fragrance, which is like fruity pebbles or skittles, something like that. But very, very sweet. The fruity fragrance is not as obvious as the sweet fragrance. It is very pleasant, however. The orchid itself is not doing very well. She has some cold damage on this leaf. Nitrogen and magnesium deficiency all coming together in one go. She is a very, very slow grower, and I think that's because of her hieroglyphic parent. I am hoping that I can get another leaf out of her this growing season. That would be great. I couldn't be aggressive with the fertilizing as I normally am early spring because the temperatures were not matching the requirement of this summer bloomer, so I had to hold back. The light levels were also very, very low. And for that reason, she is drawing on her reserves and has these deficiencies and the cold damage, which is unfortunate. You can imagine my surprise, however, to see blooms. <laughs> I was not expecting them. I'm a little bit torn now whether I should leave the blooms on, nip them off and get the orchid to possibly grow another leaf. Haven't made my mind up about that yet. It is, however, the most sensible thing to do. So yeah, let's get these documented and dedicated. Don't want to be wasting anything here to say thank you to Nedun Cheralathan, Thirum Valavan, Mark W. and Nick Moore. My Phalaenopsis KTC Kaokicha Kut late afternoon in a barmy southern Spain early evening. She blooms for you to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. It's so appreciated. Thank you. So happy to have this orchid back in bloom. This is Pudangus dactyloceras, and I have one out of four spikes in bloom. Yep, you heard correctly, four spikes. <laughs> oh my. So the first spike I want to dedicate to Wiwid Lesdiati and Nita Price Plant Paradise. She is tiny, tiny, tiny. Oh, but she has a huge place in my heart. And her name is not 2.0 because that is what is on her tag. It is because she's the second Podangas that I have in my collection since I messed up the first one. The first one was in Lekka and self-watering. And well, I got the ratio of the size of the Lekka wrong. I was misting far too frequently. And unfortunately, I lost her due to stem rot, even though I have a very dry climate. But okay, these blooms, yes, they're tiny, but this is glass. 
the blooms, the structures, the textures. I hope that the photography that I took will give you a perfect impression of the magic of these blooms. I cannot put another word towards these blooms. Even though they're small, they're not showy, but my goodness, I really do hope we with Lestiati and Nita Price plant paradise that I can do the image of these blooms justice and portray the magic that I feel when I see them in person. As always, there is no filter on any of my images and if I had to describe a bloom and make some corrections, I try to give you as exact a description as I can of the actual color. But in this case, oh, she loves the camera. I cannot tell you she loves the camera. I thought it was going to be so difficult to be able to show you the spurs, the transparency of the blooms, how they form and bloom out in a fan shape. I just can't. It's like crystal. It's, it's something out of the Murano Island in Venice. It's just exquisite. They are not fragrant. Meanwhile, yes, I've been up to try and gauge if there's a fragrance even at night, considering that they're so pristine white. It's possible that at night they exude a fragrance, but I don't dare stick my nostril down one of the blooms <laughs> because I don't want to inhale it. I know, sorry, bad visual there, but you know what I mean. Sometimes a nocturnal fragrant bloom will actually just come at you the closer you get. I get none of this from her and well, I'm not going to risk it anymore. But throughout the images that have been going over the screen, I hope that you saw the beautiful little structure of the bloom and how transparent everything is about her. And then the green dot, like, ta-da! Just a little bit of a touch of je ne sais quoi to finish the look off. The spur on these blooms themselves, it's like having a little mother of pearl spoon that belongs to a little fairy or a pixie. I am so grateful to a Karen Orchids in Belgium and Tokyo World Mark that actually gifted me this orchid. So if you want this orchid, let me tell you. Her pot is a very, very high-tech, fancy soap dish that you would get in any bathroom accessory store. You have to make sure it is a bathroom soap dish, something where you can put little suckers on the wall. And if your media is not that heavy, mine is it's only lava rock then you can attach it to a wall and enjoy your orchid there there's a little bit of humor in that but i just wanted to put it out there that the pot is a soap dish what i was trying to replicate here was an orchid top kind of setup but on a budget you know on a budget and it's working it's working a treat on the other side of the orchid let me just turn her around if you have the time thank you very much I have a root that has gone down into the lava rock right here. And that is perfect because if I do need to mist well, I'm gonna sacrifice aerial roots because of my dry climate. If I do mist, it'll only be along the lower perimeter right here so that these roots stay hydrated and she gets what she needs. Look, spike number four. Isn't this amazing? What a beautiful orchid. And you can see, <laughs> Well, maybe I'll give you a better impression. Sorry for that jiggle. You can see how tiny the blooms are in comparison. Oh, she is gorgeous. Anyway, we will see more of her as her spikes start to bloom out, but the first spike is dedicated to Vivit Lesdiati Anita Price Plant Paradise as a massive thank you for your support on my channel. I do appreciate having you here. It is a feel-good factor when I see you. My Phalaenopsis speciosa crossed with Violacea has blessed us with another bloom, the second one of the season. Isn't she pretty? Oh, this is so gorgeous. And I dedicate her to Elisa's Marie. Thank you very much, Elisa's Marie, for your support here on my channel. This orchid is recovering very, very well now that the temperatures also match her preferences. The magnesium deficiency from early in the season has been corrected. So she is responding to the Epsom salt soaks. There is one leaf in the back, the oldest leaf, which is still showing signs of the deficiency, but she is looking so much better than what she was looking like four months ago. I can assure you of that. Still no root growth, however, but here we are. 
the bloom is the main focus that is what we're dedicating to elisa's marie she is a little bit more on the pink side in the viewfinder despite the late afternoon early evening but not by much not by much you can still see the hologram effect that she has on her petals and sepals and really appreciate the hair on the lip so a tad a tad darker a little bit more old purple than this pink that you see but really i'm being picky right now i really love the little tips at the end of these highly highly sought after <laughs> summer bloomers very beautiful her fragrance during the day has a hint of cinnamon to it it's not as strong as the violacea that i have in bloom as well despite being a parent it is sweet it is pleasant has a bit of cinnamon in it but there is no intensity to the fragrance or i am just spoiled by what i have experienced via the violacea i think that's probably it because i remember gushing about this fragrance being superb excellent and yummy <laughs> so ignore what i've just said the fragrance is superb excellent and yummy <laughs> don't want to get greedy here she's a recovering phalaenopsis also from the stress of the winter spring and that is what i am so grateful about now let's hope we get some roots of the season not quite satisfied with a single bloom never satisfied as an orchid grower <laughs> but elisa marie i hope that you're doing well I appreciate your support on my channel very, very much and my Speciosa cross with Violacea. She blooms for you. Thank you for everything. Oh, aren't these colors just some of the most perfect, perfect summer colors ever? Oh, well, but at least for the west corner of my patio right now, my Papillonanthe Terrestre variety under Sonia is in full bloom and for the first time ever with two spikes. Now, for me, this is a massive big deal because my Papillonanthe is not in its ideal climate. And for that reason, it always has to start again at the beginning of the season, but still Still two spikes I'm so excited if you're one of the people that has this as a hedge in your climate in your garden then you know what I am jealous because that means you're living in my preferred climate as well but enough of that first of all before we get into and show some more pictures and I talk about things I do want to dedicate these blooms to say thank you very very much to 13v Clementina Garrido Nick Gimerek Juan No, P. Prince, and Eric Bremer. Thank you to all of you for your support on my channel. I think I have six blooms. At least I hope I didn't miscount. I am terrible at counting blooms, but there are six, I believe, in here. There's four on one spike and two on the second spike. Yeah, thank goodness for that. <laughs> These blooms are fragrant when the sun hits them. They have a beautiful, mild floral fragrance. Nothing that I can really put into that fragrance. If I said rose, yeah, like a rose. If I said it was a typical cattleya fragrance, well, some cattleyas are stronger than others, but it is floral. It is there only when the sun shines on them. I am now late afternoon filming these blooms, but I did take pictures during the time period when the sun is hitting the blooms directly just to bring out the incredible chrysoline texture and visual that these blooms have when they are in full sun. Being a warm to hot grower, these don't mind <laughs> direct sun. It's just trying to pick up on the colors and the details, which makes it difficult with photographing them or filming them in the sun for that matter, if it were to be windy at the same time. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Speaking of wind, yeah, never mind, never mind. There is no wind, as you can see, for that reason it is a late afternoon dedication of these blooms which once again as a reminder go to 13v clementina garrido nick gemerek juan not p prince and eric bremer I also have other fans of these blooms. There is competition that I try to take care of daily to keep them nice looking. So nothing happens to them. So I can dedicate nice looking blooms and that's ants. Ants are absolutely loving these blooms. And I'm not surprised because maybe you have noticed throughout some of the images that have been going up that the buds do have that look of an ant head about them. 
And if you're picking up Siliano in the background, this is his time to go bonkers because it's just before the sun is about to set time of day and that is Siliano's time of day. But anyway, back to the blooms. The buds look like the heads of ants and I always have to admire the ants coming over and I keep thinking they're coming to worship their ant goddess. <laughs> That is a minor detail for amusement that I usually enjoy when I see these buds start to form. It's fascinating how big the buds have to get before they actually open their blooms. And then eventually we have these blooms for about two weeks, maybe three, if the wind doesn't take them out because I happen to have very dry wind. If it was windy with 85% humidity, these blooms would be able to handle it easy peasy despite their lacy and floofy structures. There's nothing firm about these blooms. They're very delicate to the touch, but they are some tough cookies if the environment were to be super windy, but you gotta have humidity with them. Absolutely love the blooms. Remind me of the perfect summer outfit. It's just gorgeous. I find this so Caribbean. I just love it. Personally, I have never been to the Caribbean, but these are the colors that come to mind. Anybody in the Caribbean watching this video can either confirm that or negate it or add colors. Aqua. Aqua is another color that I associate with the Caribbean. Anyway, I ramble because they're gorgeous and I am enjoying what I'm seeing in the viewfinder and I sincerely hope that 13B, Clementina Garrido, Nick Gemerick, Juan Nup, P. Prince, Eric Bremer are also enthralled by these blooms. Thank you to all of you for your support on my channel. You're very, very much appreciated. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry about that. Maybe I should have said warning. Do not adjust your set, but squint. <laughs> I wanted to see how close we can get into a Dendrobium hibiki that is in full bloom. Well, almost. I still have some buds that should open. But yeah, we have a slightly overcast day and I thought, heck, why not give this a go? But yikes! <laughs> if you're seeing this on a big screen, sorry! <laughs> it's just like, how can you not though? Look at this! Look at this sea of pink and orange. It's just manic insanity. I love it. Even though there's so much abundance in this blooming, I can tell you I am super protective of every single bloom seeing as last year at a certain period of time I saw little white aphids trying to enjoy the blooms as well. And I don't want to have that happen again. And in case you were wondering, no, there is no filter at all. <laughs> what you see is what you get. And what you get is a massive, massive thank you also for watching the video. Thank you once again for supporting my channel. Everybody that's not mentioned here today, this beautiful bloom spectacle, it's for all of you. I appreciate you so much. Sincerely hope that you enjoyed this episode and seeing some blooms that have long, long faded. Wishing you a beautiful day on one condition as per usual, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.